Hello and welcome to our video um, about a study that we made in the, in the clinic on uh, muscle loss. It has the title, Is Muscle and Protein Loss Relevant in Long-Term Fasting in Healthy Men? Uh, this study has already been discussed in another YouTube video from a purely scientific perspective. But today we will talk about um, the um, importance of exercise, um, my, the making of, yeah, like you said, because uh, I was one of the study participants, so I can maybe give a perspective from uh, the participant of a study working with uh, extremely renowned scientific goals um, and to give a perspective on how they evaluate uh, the, um, the title of this study uh, in, in, during, a, during a fast. I'm Victor Wilhelmi, the director of the Clinique Buchner Wilhelmi in Marbella. This is Dr. Francois Wilhelmi de Toledo, uh, who's been a doctor at the clinic and has now transitioned into a role of scientific director. And yeah, maybe just to kick it off, um, how, how did this study come to be? How did you find the collaborators? Maybe just a little background on this. You know yeah. that uh, I started uh, working at the clinic, which is a family business with your father. Yes. Uh, we are the third generation, the founder, Dr. Otto Buchinger, um, was healed thanks to 19 days of fasting from a very, very severe rheumatic fever at that time. So we, we, we have a, a big, big uh, experience of working with fasting persons, humans, not uh, mice or little animals, but really humans. And we see that it's a therapeutic approach, it's a preventive approach. And at the same time, you see people who come and uh, hardly come um, the, the stairs up and after three weeks, they are changed and they can move much better. The performance, uh, their sportive performance is increased. So this is the things we see clinically. And then uh, 40 years ago, as I started, fasting was only known in the field of massive overweight. And uh, they used fasting times over 100 days. Uh, for very, very obese people, they didn't give them an exercise program and nothing. And then it popped up that the um, nitrogen balance was negative, meaning um, the people were losing proteins. And automatically, the, the conclusion was drawn, the muscles are really suffering in that time. It was a total contradiction to what I in my day-to-day -day as a physician in a fasting clinic observed. Mm. So I said, this is not possible. And we didn't come into the trip of giving formulas of protein because we saw it works with what we have. We have 250 calories as uh, fruit juices and, um, and vegetable soups, and we didn't change that. So I was since 40 years preoccupied by why do the people always pretend you lose your muscles, you have even a sort of melting of your muscles. It's absolutely not what we observe. And until we ourselves were able to uh, build up um, a scientific department and gather uh, values and va gather data on humans, proving that they improve their muscular performance. Mm -hmm. And this is for me the big dream I have uh, to let to the next generation, which actually your brother, yourself, and, you, and your cousin who are taking, have taken the responsibility for the fasting clinics, working of Elemi, uh, to let you with um, a sort of uh, um, having get, got rid of this dogma, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, this could be interesting for us to prove uh, for the clinics, but how is it that such researchers like uh, Yvon Le Mao or Stéphane Blanc or Chantal Simon, who are really from top, top notch scientists from the CNRS, how come they got interested in it? Well, um, Yvon Le Mao is a very long time friend, and we always dream to make research together. He is, of course, the he was the head of a big lab in the National Research Center in France, in Strasbourg. And he's studying big animals, 
penguins and other birds, for instance, big birds who make the migrations. And he knew exactly that there are heavy protein sparing mechanisms and they are able to do a high athletic uh, workout over thousands of kilometers, and in the case of the yeah. penguins, by temperature under, under minus 40 grades. And he knew that, but you know, you, you publish uh, in animal fields, and um, the other ones are a big, big market of protein diets. So this consolidates, of, of course, a dogma, and no one was really interested in proving that fasting um, uh, in humans, because we uh, is 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 not detrimental, because we are only the only fasting clinic. Or at least at that time, we were the only fasting clinic uh, worldwide, probably. Yeah, just from the perspective of a study participant, it was really interesting because we had a very uh, strict protocol every day. We moved in the mornings. We did a morning walk. Then we had um, in the afternoon a session of uh, muscle ex exercise. And at the um, in the night another movement, and we had to breathe into a mask. So our gas composition was measured. We had a twenty-four hour urine collection. Um, we had to do strength tests, like an echocardiogram, where you, uh, with electrodes all over your body, you do a strength test in a in a bicycle. Our ketones were measured, um, and we did strength muscle strength yeah. test with a with a device. We even had to walk up different flights of stairs every day to see if we if we would lose. And we did a spiro ergometry as well. And I have to say it was probably the fast where, because normally I'm a little bit cold in, in, when I fast, and it was the fast I was the least cold and I had really very good energy throughout. And it was quite remarkable because it's also the fast where I moved most. And other participants in the studies, especially the ones who normally don't do so much sport, um, actually logged increased strength uh, in their measurements. So the researchers were very uh, perplexed. Um, so at least they didn't lose strength, but even some gained strength by doing this extra effort, even while being uh, in fasting. Um, I, I think... Um... This is exactly what we measured in the publication. We see that the um, ergometry results improved, although the weight went down and, and they could uh, they had a better power. We, we could really uh, document that the performance of the muscles was increased. So what you feel subjectively yeah. was exactly documented. And, and of course, if you have an improvement of your performance, it's difficult to think that uh, you lose muscle. And there were two or three um, mistakes in this paradigm of uh, muscle melting during long-term fasting. The first one is that um, it all comes from the muscles. No, we know that protein is utilized during the fasting and since you don't get uh, any because you fast, then of course this means that you, you will lose a certain amount of proteins, which is not immediately be the, uh, built up again. But now what we could demonstrate, and we are going to demonstrate still better in our next studies, is that not only the muscle can give proteins, but all the metabolically active tissues, and this is the liver, the spleen, uh, the mucosal walls of the intestine, all organs, in, including the heart and the muscles, but the muscles are relatively well protected. And evo evolutionary, you can explain that. Also, the brain is not touched, even if it's a big ball of fat, uh, you lose fat all over the body, but not the brain. Why? Because in the evolution, when you started being in ketosis, when uh, utilizing your fat as a fuel, not having to eat, you had to be alert to find the food. So the brain is totally well during the fasting. Even you said you were more concentrated, you were alert, you were active and energetic. And the muscles were needed because in the prehistoric times, we couldn't go to a supermarket. We had to, uh, to kill an animal or <laughs> to make long walks to find something to pick up. Mm. And so we, we see that uh, the shrinkage of the organs, a little bit of the muscles, 
uh, per, uh, adaptative to the weight. When you lose weight, you lose weight a bit all over the place. And, and, but the organ shrinks also. And it's just temporary. Even the muscle can give some amino acids, but then they rebuild afterwards. And this aspect of temporary, this is so important because we know today uh, from the works of other people, uh, including Walter Longo, is that uh, the muscles shrink and uh, the organs shrink still more than the muscles and they, were, they are going to be rebuilt out of new protein synthesis, out of stem cells. So you rejuvenate to a certain extent your tissues, also your muscles. It's a bit like a tree, you know, loses the uh, leaves. And the people who said, oh, you, you muscle loss, muscle med, it's like they would say, oh, it's terrible in autumn, the, the tree is losing his, his leaves, we have to do something against it. Not considering that it's a cycle. So when I have uh, friends of mine who don't want to come fasting because they have uh, worked out in the gym for a year and they don't want to lose those muscles, I can tell them that they will have, first of all, they will lose them not as much as they think they will, but actually when they go back to the gym, they will have an improved exactly. muscle structure. And even during the time, uh, they will like, improve the performance of their muscles. Mm -hmm. And then when they go on um, working out, they will regain it maybe still more. So they have to consider the phase afterwards. But it is true that if you make a, a purely aesthetic muscle hypertrophy, which the is bodybuilders, bodybuilders but, but the ones who just want to be on the picture, their performance of this hypertrophic muscle are not good. And these people should probably not fast because um, uh, the body has a tendency to correct hypertrophy. You know, uh -huh. it's like the muscle, the heart is also a muscle. And when you fast, uh, for instance, by a person who had a, a valve defect and the heart was hypertrophic, then these persons go to the surgeon, the valve is corrected, and then the hypertrophy disappears. They get back to a normal heart. Yeah. And this is why um, people making a workout for, to have to be strength, to have strength and power, those will have a benefit. And the ones who just uh, for show, uh, well, maybe they choose something else. They should have fast. <laughs> and uh, already our, uh, my great-grandfather, uh, Otto Buchinger, when he uh, started his method, was recommending to move, to get out in the fresh air. There's probably an element of connection with nature, but also why do you think movement is so important in fasting? Why do you feel better when you move? Well, the works of Matson, among others, showed that the metabolism of exercise is this very similar to the metabolism of fasting. Through exercise, you come into ketosis. Through fasting, you come also into ketosis. Ketosis on a long term, if you do a, a fast, like in this case, in this article, 16 healthy men fasted 10 days, uh, according to the Burger Wilhelmi program, giving just a little bit of uh, carbohydrates. And so you have a synergy between, between sport and uh, fasting or exercise. And um, at the same time, like you say, for the mood, uh, Otto Buchinger has said also that you need to have uh, food for your soul. When you fast from food for your stomach and for your pleasure of eating, you don't have that. You need food for your soul and nature, like you said, nature and the pleasure of moving into nature, the smells, the sounds, the beauty of it makes that you, your mood improves and not only that, we see that in fasting, that the mood is lifted, the well-being measured on visual scales uh, increases from day to day. So it's not an agony uh, to fast, it's totally the contrary, you know that since you now direct yeah. the clinic, you see the people people who have everything in life, material, they are in a room of 25 square meters and they say, I've never been so happy in my life. Yeah. And light, uh, it's true that um, the movement, uh, people, I mean, like, like you said, our, our great grandfather recommended uh, movement, 
uh, we recommend it to, to our guests to move. And um, we did an, well, you could say for some people, almost extreme movement protocol. And nobody felt bad. I mean, there was no adverse effect. And I remember the researchers, they thought people would get more tired as the days progress. And they saw that either they maintained or even the ones who didn't move before they they went up in, in yes, strength. We, we saw that the strength in the lower extremities improved with a lot of tests, uh, you know, yeah. uh, that are very um, accepted. And uh, this is why in other muscle groups who are less maybe used than the, the lower extremities, the strength were conserved. This means it has to do with the movement program we offer with the fasting and for metabolically ill people, obese or high blood pressure or diabetes, it's extremely important to fast and move. Mm -hmm. But even probably if you wouldn't have this program, you would probably protect your muscle the same. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, something we have still to prove. What is interesting also just from a purely observational uh perspective we have a lot of clients who come and they feel light and they haven't moved in the last years and suddenly they want to move and they want to go to the gym and they want to take the hikes and sometimes these people crash if they overdo it no when they haven't moved a lot and, and then they really need one or two days to to recuperate well, this is why we have this individual guidance yeah. through medical doctors and fitness trainers. Uh, because, uh, of course, when you start feeling so well in your body, you, you can uh, overdo it. And uh, like you said, many people, they are not uh, metabolically well balanced. Then they never use this fantastic program of the, the fasting mode. The switch is not trained. Yeah. And the more you fast, the, the more you train your your metabolic switch like you train a muscle and this is why we have so many maybe 50 percent of the people who come on a regular basis and they say okay the first fasting i had these difficulties when i started but now i come in the fasting metabolism with much much less difficulties and some of them commit like like this like the sportive people people making sport they are accustomed to switch from uh, sugar as fuel uh, sugar from the food to ketones and fat coming from the fat reserves. Yeah. Well, I think it's, a, it's, it's an interesting perspective and I think also we were able to kind of uh, answer a few of the myths that I hear on a personal basis that um, led you to do a whole study uh, with, the, with the CNRS and um, from, an, from a perspective of a study participant, I can say that I think fasting and movement are definitely um, complementary and should be used together, but it's very advisable that you also observe yourself as you observe yourself in fasting, you go at your own speed, you do incremental and... Um, don't and also, try to make a record. Yes, don't try to overdo it. You know, some people also, they want to push this weight loss to the extreme and then they push too hard and then it kind of backfires a little bit, but those are mistakes sometimes you do them once and then you know it for the next couple of times yeah. it's already done. It's a big opportunity to know yourself much better yeah. and to respect the body and the rhythm and so you, you, you can have perfect results. Yeah. So um, looking forward to welcoming you maybe at the clinic one day and um, if you choose to do a fast don't forget to move um, but at your own pace and don't overdo it from the from the beginning thank you thank you <laughs>